James, and I'm an Alexander Technique teacher, and this is Nelly. She's a deep sea welder. Together, we're here to talk to you about the primary control. So sit back and let's get psycho physical, baby! <laughs> The term primary control is Alexander Technique shorthand for the relationship between the head, the neck and the back, or the skull and the spine. So why do we call it the primary control? Primary because the relationship of the head on top of the spine has the greatest influence on how the rest of the body is working and is where we as Alexander teachers often start. Control is achieved by doing less by reducing tension so that your body can work optimally, ergonomically, and as it wants to, naturally. So good primary control is when we reduce tension so that the head, the neck, and the back can work together to organize human movement. This means whatever you're doing, you will benefit from thinking about your primary control, be it cooking, having an argument, or even tearing up at a wedding. <coughs> your emotions, your stress levels, and your motor skills are influenced by your primary control. So, what relates the head, the neck, and the back? It's all together now, the spine. The spine is made up of 33 vertebrae and is arranged into three lovely curves. This makes it strong, but also mobile. So why does it need to be? Did you know that the average human head weighs five kilograms? which is actually really heavy. According to Google, that's the same weight as a pumpkin, 40 bananas, an adult cat, Ruff. and helpfully, five kilograms of gold. Yeah. <laughs> so how does the spine cope with all this weight? By being able to rebalance. As any good therapist will tell you, the key to a great relationship is communication. Rebalancing is how the head and the neck and the back communicate. And how does that make you feel? So a communicative primary control is one where the head is available to rebalance 12 times a second on top of the spine, which is the ideal condition for the head, neck, back to be connected and mobile. Nellie's spine cannot move because unfortunately she's made of plastic. Let's see what happens when we put five kilograms of weight on an immobile spine. Because this spine is unable to rebalance, it cannot support this much weight. So, why does that not happen to us? Because we have a spine that is designed to rebalance, which distributes stress evenly throughout the body, so no one place is put under too much pressure. But if my body's designed so perfectly, why do I have backache all the time? Well, Nelly, I'm so glad you asked. Our bodies may be designed to rebalance all the time, but sometimes what we do gets in the way of our availability to rebalance. <laughs> Everyday activities such as working at a desk or wearing fabulous footwear can have a serious impact on our well-being. Focusing on a screen pulls your five kilogram head out of alignment with your spine, which in turn rocks you off the support of your sit bones. This puts all of the stress on your back as it is the only part of you which is stopping you from falling forwards. In this scenario, we've made it unnecessarily difficult for our head, neck and back to communicate and therefore support one another. When standing, your primary control is supported by your feet on the floor. In heels, your feet are taken off the floor, which means your lower back has to work a lot harder to stop you from falling over. This not only puts strain on our primary control, but can make us feel anxious and unstable. After all, it's very difficult to feel grounded when your feet aren't on the ground. Set! Rawr! A bear attack is a big stimulus, but in the 21st century there are plenty of things that can put our body into the startle pattern. Giving a speech, remembering a difficult conversation, or worrying about rent can all cause us to pull our head down, our shoulders up, 
and increased tension through the torso, sometimes without even noticing. This again can affect our primary control's availability to rebalance. Life is full of stimuli, and we can never really predict how we're going to react. However, building an awareness of when we're pulling our head down and stopping ourselves from being able to rebalance can be half the battle. I'm a musician, and very often just the thought of a big performance can get me into a slow onset startle pattern. Fortunately, just remembering to release my primary control can allow me to feel calm when the pressure's on. So next time emotions are running high, or you're in a high stakes situation, or even just doing a daily task, taking a second to remember your primary control can help you to navigate the world with an easy body and a calmer mind. So How about just one normal one? So why does it need to be? I'm going to kill you. So why does it need to be?